Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining. Um, so I'm here to talk about a pr provisioning model for bare metal that we use in HPC and how we want to bring that to Ironic and OpenStack. So it's about it, the core piece to it is it's stateless. Um, so th it's more than just stateless. Stas stateless is what we use um, for deploying image or deploying large systems in HPC. Um, you know, up to 500 node clusters, um, and you know, that's worked well for us. But it's, that's kind of the old way of doing that. So what is there with OpenStack that we can leverage? What's new? What's cutting edge out there that we can use to take our ex existing techniques for stateless provisioning and use that not just for uh, um, new OpenStack workloads, but also to make existing workloads easier um, to redeploy and uh, make changes. So the key elements there, our secret sauce, are, is Docker and in conjunction with Ironic. So just to recap, what is stateless? What do I mean by that? And why do we want to use it? So stateless has become some of a buzzword lately. Um, it, you know, it's used in the sense of web applications, uh, containers. These are applications that inherently don't store state locally. So to me, that means that it's, there's usually state to the application. And to me, that means that it will store it off node somewhere. Uh, what that means then is that you can tolerate failures, uh, reinstantiate new instances, and there's no information loss. So that's important from a consistency point of view. Or there's um, the ability to uh, reprovision, which is, in our case, that's um, the target application is image provisioning rather than the Docker case. The reason to be stateless is for consistent and um, uninterrupted uh, throughput of HTTP uh, flows. So. If we can be stateless, what does that mean? Um, in image provisioning, that means um, a common way of doing that is with a single NFS root share, where your images boot out of NFS root store. And the um, RAM disk, you will um, create a RAM disk and bind mount, say, um, Etsy, var, anything that needs to be writable into that RAM disk. So now you, you have a, a read-only root layer. And then, if you will, another layer on top that is writable. So now to relate that to Ironic. Ironic has a few different provisioning models. Um, there's, a provi there's a Pixie driver. There's also the agent driver. Um, we started this work originally with the Icehouse release. So our focus is adapting the Pixie driver. Um, I've recently been told that the agent driver is the way forward. So we'll be looking at, that, at, looking at that workflow in the future. But so just a quick overview of how the Pixie driver workflow um, um, happens with uh, with Ironic. So there's a Nova request coming in um, from the user. This you know is going through an OpenStack infra infrastructure and reaches the Nova compute node. The Nova compute node is configured with an Ironic driver that then will speak the Ironic API to an Ironic conductor. Now the conductor is where the kind of is the where all the work happens. So it's responsible for pulling the image from Glance and also distributing that image to the different bare metal nodes. So I'm just arbitrarily breaking this into stage one. Um, where it has to pull both the RAM disk and kernel image. Um, those are both small, it's indicated by the, the, the thin line. Um, and then a large QCAD2 image that's going to be deployed to the instances. Step two is deploying the, pushing out the RAM disk to the nodes that boot. So Pixie boot, um, little Pixie boot, and then via, via TFTP or possibly HTTP, pull that image down and pull it locally. Then they'll begin their um, provisioning process by um, then connecting, pulling the, um, the actual QQ2 image from the conductor to the individual nodes using iSCSI. So this is, it's a, um, it's a traffic intensive uh, process here. The, the, the problem becomes the conductor, uh, where now scaling the number of nodes puts an equal amount of stress on the network connection between the conductor and your fabric. So once that image has been uh, um, pushed to each bare metal node, They'll go through. They'll be. They'll reboot it. Reboot into the new image and continue on as now a newly deployed ironic instance. So how we want to change? How do, you know, to review how, how we want to change this. So the stateless driver is. It starts out this in a almost identical way. Um, so we want a user wants to boot an ironic bare metal node. So it will pass through the Nova compute node um, through the ironic driver, and now the ironic conductor will pull the RAM disk from Glance. This is a small RAM disk. Um, in our case, it was used about 14 megs. The, the next step is where it differs. We just, we don't, there's no image at this point to pull from Glance. Um, that box there with the Glance registry is external. It's not really, not really used here yet. So 
um, after we pull the RAM disk, we just push that RAM disk to the nodes. And what happens next is that the nodes boot up, they mount an NFS share as root, and then pivot root into that um, NFS share. So now that is the, the read-only root partition. And then they continue on the boot process. And at this point, you now have a, an ironic node that's available for customers to use, maybe either your infrastructure customers or your infrastructure team or possibly other customers. There's no reboot cycle involved here. So this is a single cycle from um, deployment to provisioning without any reboots here. Um, going back to um, this diagram, in the ironic conductor, there's that, there's that box there that's serving out the NFS server. So I want to go into a little more detail about how we um, are doing something with that we think is, is useful with that uh, NFS server piece. So we're making use of Docker to serve that image out of a container that's really just an NFS server, but it is now taking what is the image and making the image, it's an application. Um, it's a root file system, and it's also an NFS server running within that container that is serving out the entire root partition. So th this, like previous diagram, um, showed now that now this Docker container can serve out the image to different bare metal nodes. But additionally, Docker has the benefits that this image is now neatly contained. It's now easy to move um, to store into a Docker registry, to move from node to node. Um, and even orchestration services can then be used to deploy multiple um, NFS servers, multiple Docker containers, and then partition out the, uh, uh, the cluster to talk to a specific NFS server. So just a comparison, what this buys us. It's a, a trade-off. So that the post-boot um, traffic there is different with the stateless driver. We actually, there's actually um, traffic over the network with the stateless driver after the boot phase. Um, this varies. It's probably um, mostly, it's probably limited to configuration files and service binaries, things that the, app, that the system is going to boot or just is going to touch in um, uh, both the, the read on, well rather the read-only partition, so um, user, lib, bin, any of those um, directories, it will actually need to read that binary from the NFS share. So that will incur some network traffic. But the, the benefit there is in the image stage, where there's, we estimate about 300 megabytes of uh, data for the image that goes over the wire versus the entire 2 gigabyte QCOW2 that will again get sent to every node. So the reason why it's 300 megabytes, it possibly could be less, but the reason why it's 300 in that case is that we are sync um, etsy and slash var from the image to each, each node. So this is, um, it hasn't been necessary to trim this down, but it would be, it'd be possible to trim this down further. So the current status, we, we completed this early with the, um, we had a, um, a proof of concept that worked with, with Icehouse. We had problems with Ironic with Icehouse and reliability and um, issues with the locking. Those concerns have been addressed for the most part, so we're, we're um, anxiously waiting, moving this to Kilo to, uh, to actually you know, deploy this in a production capacity. So um, we're beginning testing with that next. And um, I've gone out and put the, um, the Docker file to create this NFS root um, image server that's out on GitHub now. Uh, the pieces remaining, the next steps, we need to get the, the stateless driver and integrate it into Ironic in some house, in some capacity. So this um, might be, we need to talk to the Ironic community about this. It might be another driver, um, another deploy driver, in addition to the Pixie and agent methods. Um, we also need to upstream our deploy element in, um, from Disk Image Builder. And so I've been told the logical place for that is the O image elements. Um, so that's all on our plan. Additionally, we can start looking at how we're going to orchestrate this across multiple servers. So one possibility is using the Magnum service um, for, um, as a, well, using the, the NFS um, image server as a use case for Magnum. We use Magnum to scale out the NFS servers um, and you know, look at what we can do for high availability there. Um, NFS isn't necessarily the greatest um, um, use for, the, or it's not the greatest file system for this. It works, it's reliable, it's what we use now. We're able to get around the scaling issues by multiple NFS servers, but we might want to evaluate different um, file system alter alternatives. So parallel NFS would buy us some additional scalability. Um, with uh, Ceph, there's an interesting, some interesting possibilities there with either the RVD block device 
um, which is there's been some discussions here at this OpenStack Summit about using the RBD block device um, as a boot from volume method, or booting the ironic uh, image from the RBD volume. Additionally, CephFS could be used in an analogous fashion to NFS. And um, with that, I want to wrap up. And um, thank you for your time. <laughs>